The Department of Public Health and Human Services is pleased to bring you Aging Horizons. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Fraud, Legal Issues, Veterans Benefits and Caregiving. Aging Horizons is a program dedicated to inform and prepare Montanans on these timely issues, making a difference to you and your loved ones. Here now is today's program host. Hi folks, today on Aging Horizons, we have a very special show for you. We're going to be talking about the Eastern Montana Elder Justice Council and the projects that they're working on and what they're doing to try to bring good justice for folks who live in rural areas. We know you need to know about this. We know we have a lot to tell you about, so don't go anywhere. Stay with us. Every 65 seconds, someone is affected with Alzheimer's or other dementias. Many become isolated at a time when help is most needed. If you or someone you love is affected, help is available, both for people with memory loss and their caregivers. Memory loss can feel frightening, but you are not alone. Call the free 24-7 Alzheimer's Association helpline, 800-272-3900, for guidance and support. This is Bill. He just received his new Medicare card and is following some simple rules to protect himself from fraud. He knows to never give out his Medicare, Social Security, or bank number over the phone. And this is Nancy. She knows that to detect any problems, she always reads her Medicare Summary Notice or Medicare Advantage EOB to make sure the billing is correct. Both Bill and Nancy know that anything suspicious can be reported to Montana SMP at 1-800-551-3191. Forty-five years, two packs a day. It's like $80,000. I thought I was just hurting myself until I fell asleep in a chair with a cigarette. The whole house went up. And I lost it all. I knew smoking was expensive, but I never thought it would cost me everything. The human heart, even at its strongest, it's a fragile muscle. Chest and arm pain, shortness of breath, are signs of a heart under attack. But three numbers can save a life. Dial 911 at the first sign of a heart attack. Quick response from medical experts can save your life. I was 45 and it happened to me, a heart attack. Dialing 911 saved Ryan's life. Now he's here and he's healthy. This message sponsored by Mission Lifeline Montana. Hi everyone and welcome to Aging Horizons, brought to you by the Department of Public Health and Human Services. I'm your host, Kimmy Everman. We, we have a great show for you today. I'm so thrilled you're with us. We're going to be talking about the Montana, or the Eastern Montana Elder Justice Council and just kind of some of the things that they've been doing in our state um, to make sure that people in all areas have access to justice. We have with us a couple of great, great guests. First of all, we have Chuck Munson. And Chuck, you are the Assistant District, uh, or Attorney General, excuse me, um, and you work for the Department of Justice. Correct. Consumer, and, and Consumer Protection also, Correct. right? And then we also have Mike Larson. And Mike, you're, you're over at the Alliance there in Helena these days, aren't you? Or in uh, Billings these days. In Billings, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, so, Chuck, let's start with you. Um, first of all, I do want to say that this is a project that you work on, and, and it's not necessarily uh, the, uh, the opinion of the Department of Justice or, or the Office of Consumer Protection. This is a whole other project you're working on. Um, and I, I just kind of want to talk about what the project is. Sure. Thanks, Kimmy. Mm -hmm. So... Our, our council, the Eastern Montana Elder Justice Council, is a, a new council to Montana. It was created by an executive order of the governor. It was created in late 2019, and we were first assembled with our members. It happened to be uh, Valentine's Day of 2020, last year. So um, when you look at our, our mission and our purpose, it's it's. I guess I got a couple things I'd like to say. Mm -hmm. um, First, we were created to really um, bolster agency and local 
and, and community efforts and the responses that happen in eastern Montana that would address and reduce in our, and it's a 22 county region, um, the abuse, neglect, and exploitation of senior citizens. And I can, I can rattle off the counties at any point if you want. Yeah, why don't you? I'd love to hear. Sure. So it's, um, it's Bighorn, Carbon, Carter, Custard, Daniels, uh, Dawson, Fallon, Garfield, Golden Valley, McCone, Muscleshell, Powder River, Prairie, Richland, Rosebud, Roosevelt, Sheridan, Stillwater, Treasure, Valley, Weibo, and Yellowstone counties. So if you were to look at a map of our state and, and sort of cut it right down the middle in half, it's a good section of, if you're looking at the map, uh, it's a good section of the right-hand side of the map of Montana. But anyways, back to the purpose. Um, it's also worth saying we're a, a pilot project. Um, and, and designated as such to provide recommendations um, for the, the rest of the state of Montana to establish uh, an effective statewide oversight of uh, senior citizen issues in the future. Mm -hmm. um, our thinking behind that is teams like this probably ought to be established in other regions of our geographically great state. Um, and, and so again, to, to summarize our overall purpose, we're, we're focused on addressing elder fraud and abuse and neglect, but we've got a particular emphasis on uh, financial exploitation. And we want to address these problems by preventing them. So through prevention, we want to intervene where we can to stop things from getting uh, uh, too out of hand if we, we note a situation that uh, would require intervention. And then two, uh, importantly, with investigation and prosecution of, of crimes against seniors. So um, some people who work with seniors, um, like for instance you, you've probably heard of a FAST team. And for those who haven't, um, FAST teams, uh, FAST is an acronym for financial abuse specialist team. And so our council is, is actually the state's first and only existing FAST team. Uh, uh, but Mike and I consider the team to be a FAST plus team because we've also been tasked with looking into situations that may involve abuse or neglect too. You know, and Chuck, we just have a couple of minutes left in this first segment. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the council because they sound like great people? Sure. So um, if you're from Eastern Montana, your council is um, a majority made up of regional professionals from the 22 county region that we're uh, defined to serve, right? So um, there are two, I should say, a handful of Helena Bay state employees that are, are members, like, like me, I'm mm -hmm. an example of one of them. But, but by the most part, the official appointed team um, it's, it's about 17 people right now, and it includes uh, county attorney's offices, law enforcement officers. Uh, we got a sheriff and a detective on the team. We've got members from the private sector, including the banking and financial institutions, professionals. Um, we have a financial planner uh, that has you know aging clients. We have a private attorney from a regionally prominent law firm. We have the assistant U.S. attorney that's uh, located in Billings. We have a physician. And then importantly, very importantly, there are several nonprofit senior advocates that are also on the team. So that official team, uh, it, can, it can review confidential information. But then we have subcommittee participants that can work on non-confidential things with our uh, uh, team. And when you add them to the, to the group, it's about two dozen folks strong. Again, most of them from our region. Uh, and, and those two dozen people somehow touch on our work one way or another. Thank you so much for explaining that, Chuck. And folks, um, clearly this is a wide range of professionals on this team. Um, and what a great pilot project. We want to make sure that we get to the fraud, the abuse, the exploitation before it begins, if that's at all possible. So we have this great council working on some pilot projects to see if that can be done. You know, we're gonna tell you a whole lot more and we don't want you to go anywhere, so stay tuned.
think the most pleasant surprise when we turned 65 and signed up for Medicare Part B was finding out about our Welcome to Medicare preventive visit. It was free, and it gave us the opportunity to visit with our doctors and establish a plan for our health going forward. They reviewed our medical history, measured our height, weight, blood pressure, and counseled us on other risk factors. To learn more about Medicare's free or low-cost preventive and wellness benefits, call your local SHIP counselor at 800-551-3191. I mentioned it's free, right? Twice. Elder abuse is a growing problem, and it's happening right here in our Montana communities. At least one in 10 older adults are victims of physical or emotional abuse, financial exploitation, or neglect. To get help or report elder abuse, call your local area agency on aging or adult protective services at 1-844-277-9300. I was the last guy you'd expect to get diabetes. I was a competitive runner and I always took care of myself. So when I was diagnosed, it kind of threw me. But it's really encouraging to know I'm not alone with it. There are a lot of other people going through the same things as I am. It takes some effort. You have to keep after it. Exercise, meds, and diet are the key. But there are a lot of folks who want me to succeed. Diabetes is not the end of the world. With effort and attitude, you can have a normal life. Flight 109. Is that Evil Knievel on the runway? Whoa, Daredevil! You need a Montana Real ID to fly. Go to mtrealid.gov to make an appointment. Looks easier than jumping a canyon. Smile. I see you changed your name from Robert to Evil. Did you bring your name change documentation? I'm not trying to pull a stunt. Got the paperwork right there. Go to mtrealid.gov. Now I can fly! It's that easy! Hi everyone, welcome back. We're here at Aging Horizons talking about fraud, scam, exploitation, abuse, and a great project that's going on in eastern Montana. We have with us today Chuck Munson, and Chuck is, with, is an Assistant Attorney General with the DOJ here in Montana. Welcome Chuck. And we also have Mike Larson. And Mike, you're at the, the Adult Alliance there in Billings. Um, but you have lots of other things that you've done in your life. So we're going to ask you to give us a little idea about the council structure and what they're actually doing. Because I know um, Chuck had said that there were some subcommittees, but we're also looking at prevention, intervention, et cetera, right now. Exactly. Um, Chuck did a good job of describing the type of people that are on the console. So one of the things that allowed with just that breadth of, of knowledge and, and, and background that we got from this group of people, we looked at how do we divide up the different tasks that were laid out in the executive order that created the console. And there were a number of specific things we were told we needed to address the nice thing that it said is it did lay out <clears throat> the ability to create subcommittees. So initially what we did is we looked at the breadth of what we had to tackle here, and we came up with three subcommittees that we were, we were able to populate with experts in a variety of different areas. So prevention, which you just mentioned, Kimmy. Yep. Which, by the way, I mean, all of us feel no doubt that if we can prevent um, abuse, neglect, and exploitation of our senior population, that is a total win. Um, that's where we really saw a lot of participation from groups, say, like AARP, the area agencies on aging that already have tremendous um, outreach and contact with the senior population. Um, and they're able to go out and do education as much as possible. That's been a challenge with COVID, but they've been able to go out and do education on scams and on, on different, particularly scams and other issues along that line to try to reduce and prevent the amount of times that this happens. The next committee that we kind of look at in that, in that line would be intervention. So you're into something, something's actually ongoing. What are the opportunities to actually intervene and stop it in motion? And there are some specific state laws. One example would be a bank can, if they believe there's fraud or exploitation, 
they can put the brakes on a financial transaction until they can determine whether or not it's legitimate. That's one form of intervention. The intervention subcommittee, though, is also looking at what do you do after the fact? Someone's been exploited, they've lost the money, it's gone, but there's a lot afterwards that has to happen to intervene in that situation and try and make that senior whole. Like what? Uh, what else would have to be, what, what else would have to happen? I'll give you an example, a case, a specific case that happened in a, a central Montana town where an older couple lost virtually their entire life savings, mm. a pretty good chunk of money in an exploitation case. Um, they could not recover the funds. The, the, the wife or the, um, the, the woman in, in this case needed to be placed in a facility. They didn't have any money. And they needed to qualify for Medicaid but they couldn't explain where the money went very easily. So that required quite a bit of intervention just to get through the process of applying for Medicaid in a case where you can't explain where 200 and some thousand dollars went. Unfortunately, in this case, it was a family member that stole the money and that created some resistance to um, you know, actually blaming this. In this case, it was a granddaughter. So that'd be the type of thing. The, the, it's already happened. Money, we're not sure where, if we can ever get it back. But th these people now need to be placed in a facility and can't be because they can't pay for it because the money's gone. Right. And in those cases, what you hope is eventually our prosecution subcommittee <laughs> can find a way where people in those cases are actually prosecuted. And you would be surprised how few cases of elder abuse uh, or exploitation end up actually being um, taken into a courtroom setting. They're very difficult to prosecute. The reality is it's either someone um, on the scam case, they're, you don't even know where the people are, but the majority of the cases are family members, which creates a very, very difficult dynamic. Um, in terms of prosecution. And so we have a ways to go in Montana and I think just across the country and how we address elder abuse. And I would put it almost in the same category as domestic abuse or child abuse. You don't always have a witness um, to the crime that necessarily is either cooperative or can cooperate. In the case of dementia or diminished capacity, um, you may not have someone who can actually get into a courtroom setting and testify. So the prosecution subcommittee has a challenge, and it particularly is important for, for, for our region because you have these small rural law enforcement agencies. They don't have experts in these areas. Um, here in Billings, we're blessed to have um, a detective with some specific training, we have um, some folks in the Yellowstone County Attorney's Office who have experience with these cases. Uh, that may not be true in Fallon County right. or in uh, Valley County or, or throughout that region. So the prosecution subcommittee is actually in a place where they can assist with that. And you know, that's just times, great, that's Mike. Just that, and, you know, I want to tell our viewers that um, this, not, this isn't the end. We have so much more to tell you about this very, very important project and how it might be able to help you. So stay with us. respite. It's okay to need it. It's okay to want it. Will you provide it? The hard part about having outside help is that there's not a lot of people out there who can do that kind of work. We've been very fortunate that our Bonnie has been with us for seven years. I don't know what I'd do without her. I need her in our lives. She's our second mother. And I can't help but think of her that way. To find out how to change lives, including your own, call 800-224-6034 or visit respite.mt.gov. Questions about Medicare and other types of insurance? Contact the State Health Insurance Assistance Program Office to get answers to questions like, what is the difference between Medicare and Medicaid? And how do you decide if you need Medicare supplemental insurance? This insurance counseling program is not a sales program. It is available to provide answers to your insurance questions. 
For more information, call the State Health Insurance Assistance Program Office at 1-800-332-2272. I have so many questions about power of attorney. Well, some powers of attorney are for finances and others are for healthcare decisions. A power of attorney designates an agent who would make decisions on your behalf. While making a power of attorney, you have the ability to control your agent's power. You also have the ability to decide when that POA would take effect. Wait, am I giving away all my rights? Power of attorney isn't a license to make any decision for you, just those that you've specified. Your agent should be somebody that's working in your best interest, but it should also be somebody that you would trust. What if they try to abuse their power? Protective measures like third-party accounts secondary signatures, defined spending and gifting limits can help protect against financial exploitation. An agent's powers can always be limited by a customized power of attorney, and they can be revoked by you or the court if the power of attorney is abused. So carefully drafted estate planning documents can help ensure that your finances are monitored, but not abused. If you or someone you know is being exploited, please report to Aging Services Bureau at 844-277-9300 or the legal service developer at 1-800-332-2272. This message is sponsored by the DPHHS Aging Service Bureau. Hi everyone, welcome back to Aging Horizons. We're here talking about the Eastern Montana Elder Justice Council. Fabulous sort of project that's been going on for a couple of years now and we have a couple of great folks uh, re that represent that council with us here today. First of all, we have Chuck Munson. Hi Chuck, he's with uh, the DOJ and we also have Mike Larson who is with the Alliance in Billings. Uh, Mike, we were just talking about, you, ha you have a lot of background in some of these things. What are some examples of uh, what you kind of have seen regarding the, the folks that are being scammed in Eastern or, or, or exploited or abused in Mo uh, Eastern Montana? Uh, you know, Kimmy, one of the, the, one of the top examples that would come to mind, and it's a fairly recent case, it's just within the last um, couple of months, and it really emphasizes this whole area of scams and people hear about scams and I don't think they realize just how, how incredibly damaging it can be. This story is probably extreme, but it's real and it's happened right here in, in, in our Eastern Montana region. And it's an older couple in their eighties, they get a call, they're told um, that it's their grandson calling and he's in trouble and he needs them to come bail him out. Um, and get some money to them and to meet in a particular place to give money to these law enforcement people who will then let them out of jail. And there's so many ways this story could fall apart, but it didn't fall apart because these people are really good. And they convinced this older couple that it's true, even though it didn't sound like their, their grandson. So they go out, they get in their car, they drive down to get the money, but they do that on one of the worst um, winter days that we had here in this region um, this year and they wreck their car yeah. and they crash and granddad ends up dead. And, you know, the, the tragedy of that might be extreme, but we've seen it and Chuck has seen it where, I mean, we've seen people lose millions of dollars on some of these scams. And that's the, the same ones over and over again. It's the grandparent scam and everybody, you know, that's one that's out there. The lottery scam, the romance scam. <laughs> Um, and these just destroy lives. Uh, yes, so, and I, I just had this vision of d dominoes falling because so many things affect the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Yeah. Wow, so that, that is... just gives you an idea of what's out there and what it is that, that we're trying to either prevent or mitigate right. whenever possible. So, so Chuck, let's, let's talk to you because, you know, you have something slightly more uplifting to tell us a success about um, these, one of these situations, which we definitely want to hear. Sure. Just to illustrate, you know, the difference in uh, prevention and intervention versus Mike's story mm -hmm. where there wasn't one. Um, a story that comes to mind to me involved a, a, a very nice retired widow from our region. Um, she had met a man online on an online dating website, and her perception was that they were developing an intimate online dating relationships. Now, they never met in person. Uh, this woman genuinely believed she was in a close relationship, and some plans were made to one day meet, move in together, and, and even get married. Um, the, the man appeared 
reasonable in all respects. He's reasonably handsome. He was age appropriate. Uh, he claimed to be a successful contractor who had a project overseas and that he was busy completing. And at some point he claimed to have encountered some licensing issues where he needed a financial infusion. And so he asked his, his, his R Montanan um, to, to help him out so that he could appease some local regulators on a project that he was working on in Europe, right? So he told her that um, if she could send him some money, he'd pay her back a big profit. Then when the project was done, they could get on with their love life. Um, the woman went to her bank in Montana and she had a substantial uh, uh, portfolio of funds there from a lifetime of saving with her late husband. Um, she requested that just under half a million dollars be transferred to this guy. But her she, one very different thing that happened here was her bank was just a little bit suspicious about what was going on here and they made a phone call. They called a local adult protective services office and then that office contacted the Office of Consumer Protection and together, APS and OCP were able to intervene. We investigated the situation. We confirmed it was a scam and we ultimately convinced this woman that it was a scam and that transaction got canceled. Now, it was sad because that woman was initially upset over the loss of what she perceived to be a budding long-term relationship, but she was also very grateful once this all sunk in to have been educated on the scam. She saved her money and she's able to move on with her life. So making that informed decision to avoid the scam was, was you know, the result of our preventative and intervention work here and no money ended up being lost. So that's, as more people get educated, that's what we want to see happen more. We want to see these things stop before they even start. So I think it's perfectly clear how important a project like this is to Montana. I agree. I mean, it just, it seems like, as you said, it, there's not enough folks out there, but if we can get them before they open the barn door, before they let the horse out or whatever, um, it's so much more likely to be a successful, say, prosecution even. And I'm sure that, that the lady that you talked about was very, very happy that she didn't go down that road. Yeah, I mean, prevention can't be emphasized enough. I mean, for folks that are likely retired, you know, permanently re retired, um, it's far, far better to prevent loss than to try and recoup losses through an interception of money, right? Um, but hopefully we're not too hot, top heavy here. We want to give the, the resources that we can to intervene and prosecute where appropriately. Super. You know, Chuck, Mike, thank you both so much, not only for being on this project, but all you do out there, helping folks not get ripped off. So thanks very much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you, too. And folks, remember, it's not anything that should be humiliating or make you feel as though you're stupid, reach out. Reach out and get some assistance and you'll be a happier person for it. Thanks. Special thanks to the Department of Public Health and Human Services for their continued support. Hosts on Aging Horizons are program specialists at the Montana Office on Aging. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions. For more information about Aging Horizons, call the Department of Public Health and Human Services toll-free at 800-332-2272.